Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Ah! What just happened? Are you okay? Oh, that was a huge sneeze. You blew yourself to outer space. Oh no, I lost count. My precious Coco Puffs. <laughs> I'm gonna start again. 45, 46, 47. Ah! Choo! Are you gonna be okay? Sorry. It's allergy season. <laughs> oh no. I lost count again. My precious. My precious Coco Puffs. <laughs> My Coco Puffs. <laughs> well, you know, there is an easier way to count things using something we learned last week. Time! Oh, no. <gasps> it's him again. That's not what we... Time! Now, now. Remember, when we're talking about that operation, we call it multiplication. But this week we're going to talk about four different ways that you can show a multiplication problem. And then we're going to look at some division problems as well. To the whiteboard, Mrs. Brown. In multiplication, there are four different ways that we can represent a problem. We can represent it using equal groups. We can represent it using an array, a number line, and repeated addition. Let's take a look at a picture that we can use as an example. We're going to draw four different ways to solve the problem five times three. Now you might be saying, well, I already know that the pro what the product of five times three is, which is awesome. That means you've been really practicing your multiplication facts. Yay, give yourself a pat on the shoulder. But I also wanna make sure that you can look at a picture and be able to identify what fact that multiplication picture is showing. So first we're going to show five times three using equal groups, which is what we did last week. When I have equal groups, I'm personally going to draw the picture using three groups of five, but you could also do five groups of three. So I'm gonna draw three circles, and I'm going to put five items in each group. There's my equal groups. Next, I'm going to show five times three using an array. Now that means that I'm going to have either five rows of three objects or three rows of five objects. You choose, just make sure that when you draw an array, you have lines and columns. Next, I'm going to show this multiplication fact using a number line. With a number line, don't forget that you need to start your number line at zero. When I draw my number line, I either need three hops of five or five hops of three. And when we're multiplying, don't forget that our number line hops this way, not this way, that's division. So I'm going to do three hops and put five in each, just like I did with my picture up here. So I'm going to do count one, two, three, four, five, draw my first hop with an arrow, then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, because five times two gets me to 10. And when I do three groups of five, it gets me to 15. The last thing I'm going to do is show you repeated addition. With repeated addition, I'm showing an addition fact that I could use to solve five times three. So I could do five plus five plus five, because that gives me three groups of five. Or I could do three plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three, because that gives me three groups, or I'm sorry, five groups, one, two, three, four, five, of three. We are family. I've got all my sisters and me. We are family. Hey, hey, Russ, hey. We are family. Yo. Russ! What? Oh, can the kids hear me? Um, yes. Oh, well that's a little embarrassing. 
It's just, this song reminds me of all of this. What? How? I'm so confused. Well, all of these multiplication facts remind me of families. You know, back families, I'm back. Well, at least his butt's not on fire this week. I'm going to choose to ignore that for now. But remember, division is the inverse or opposite of multiplication. That's why fact families can be called inverse relationships. To the whiteboard! Remember, when we're talking about fact families, each of the fact families have to have four facts. Two are going to be multiplication, and two facts are going to be division. So if you're given a fact like this, three times six equals 18, and asked to choose the facts that are part of the fact family, I like to always start with the same operation. So we were already talking about multiplication. Let's just flip our facts. So instead of having three times six, I need to have six times three equals 18. Then I need to do the inverse of that fact. And remember, when you write a division fact, your largest number goes first because that's the number of items you're going to be dividing up. 18 divided by three equals six. And then we're going to flip these two numbers because our large number still has to go first. We're having 18 to items divided by six equals three. Two multiplication facts, two division facts. Remember, they're going to try to trick you. And a couple of ways that they're gonna to try to trick you is they'll give you this fact and say, hey, is this part of the fact family? And you would say no, because 18 times three doesn't equal six. And I know when I have a multiplication fact, that the largest number has to go last because I have three groups of six objects and that's going to be larger than three or six. They might also give you something like this. Six divided by three equals 18. Well, that doesn't make sense either because if I have six objects and divide it into three groups, I can't have 18 objects in a group because my first number was six. 18, the largest number, can't be the quotient. Let's see if you can identify these multiplication and division facts. Let's start with those cocoa puffs we were talking about before. Oh, um, sorry, I, I got a little hungry. Um. <laughs> All right, well, how about a different problem then? Okay, well, since Russ ate all of his Cocoa Puffs, let's talk about M&Ms. I'm gonna grab a whole bunch here, and I could count up these M&Ms one by one, but that would take forever. Instead, I'm going to divide them up into equal groups, and we'll see if we can use multiplication to help us figure out what the product is. So I divided all of my M&Ms up and I see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups. So that's one of my factors times how many are in each group. Well, I put six M&Ms in each group. And since I've been, I practiced my math facts last week, I know that seven times six equals 42. Okay, this napkin's too hard to write on. Let's flip back to our whiteboard. So when we counted up our M&Ms, we knew we had seven groups of six equals 42. But if I looked at my answer choices and that wasn't one of them, I have to remember, oh yes, fact families. I can also say that that problem showed the multiplication fact six times seven equals 42. On this problem, we're given a number line and we see that we have equal groups with the number line moving forward. I see that I have three hops and inside I have two numbers within each group. So this picture is showing two times three equals six or three times two equals six. Let's look at this array next. What fact family can be written about this array? Well, since we're talking about fact families, we know that we need to write two multiplication facts 
and two division facts. I like to first think about multiplication and count how many rows I have and multiply that by how many columns that I have. So if I look, I have one, two, three, four rows. That's my first factor times one, two, three, four columns. So this picture is showing four times four equals 16. And the other multiplication fact stays the same, four times four equals 16. When I go over to write my division fact, I remember that however many objects I start with is my first number. So this time it's going to be 16 divided by four equals four. And again, 16 divided by four equals four. Those are all four facts that are in my fact family. Next up, we have another number line, but this time our number line is going backwards instead of forwards. So we can see equal groups and we're going backwards. So that tells us that this number line is division. The first thing that I do is I count how many hops or how many groups are on my number line. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know that one of my numbers is going to be eight. Then I see that there are three in each group. So I have eight groups of three objects and that gets me to 24. But since this is division, I need to write this as a division equation. So I write the number of objects I start with first, 24. I divided it into eight groups. So 24 divided by eight equals three in each group. Remember, we can also write the flip-flop of that fact of 24 divided by three equals eight. But remember, don't write the multiplication for this picture because this picture only shows division because we're going backwards. Last one, let's write the fact family that this picture represents. First, I like to start with multiplication. So I see that we have five groups of three objects, or five times three, and that equals 15. Then I can also write that three times five equals 15 because I can flip those factors. Then thinking about my division problems, I remember that my biggest number goes first or I have 15 objects that I started with. I divided it into five groups and that equals three. Or I can also write 15 divided by three equals five. All of them are part of my fact family. Um, guys? Why is everyone suddenly wearing glasses? Because it helps with division. Get it? Division, division, like vision with your eyes, like your glasses, but like division, cause you were doing it. Do you get it, Miss Brown? Do you get it? Get our joke? The vision they were using when they looked for me. Right guys? You found me this time. Right guys? Check the description box below to find links to some multiplication songs as we still practice our facts this week. Can't wait to see what arrays you find if you choose to do choice five.